We're uh, on our way to uh, Yuma now to meet uh, the Rally Pan Am guys and uh, found out at the last minute that the uh, race bike has got a tiny, tiny little pinhole leak in the radiator. So we got to pull that off and I'm going to have to relearn how to weld, which I used to be an expert welder back in the day. I haven't welded in years, so I've got a guy for that, but uh, he's not here today. So we're just going to weld up that uh, pinhole and and uh, should be good, but uh, a little bit of a last minute Last minute uh, thrash, but we'll get it done. No, we totally broke my routine. That's why I'm so jacked up. Yeah. Yeah. Hair down, good. roll, good. alley ready. Yeah. Don't be here. You stop for a good night's sleep. Dude, we stop over the Walmart parking lot. Take your car, but we got a beer. What's up, Wes? So today we're crossing the border uh, down in New Mexico in San Luis. Uh, Wes and his dad need to get some groceries because they flew in from Washington State, so they're uh, shopping right now for the week. Uh, once we get across the border, we go to the host hotel, which is the Areza, and then uh, we set up in the parking lot, you know, get our pit and start setting up the bikes. We've got to change the suspension. Uh, to the complex suspension prep uh, parts that he's brought from Texas. And then once we get that set up, we're gonna walk the bike through tech and contingency, get that thing all dialed in, make sure that it's uh, legal. And uh, after that, it's the riders meeting and we all get a good night's sleep and start fresh in the morning. So that's, that's basically what we have today. It's a busy day, but fun.
Right now we're running into a couple small issues that we kind of expected, but hope we'd get lucky and not encounter. Um, we've got some clearance issues underneath the, uh, so we've got the nav one, which is a pretty robust piece, but the way it's mounted, there's a step right here that's coming down and, and contacting some hardware here, so we're, we're trying to get that fixed. Right now, we kind of expected this. They, they don't give you these items. You don't get to get these ahead of time, and they give you kind of a weak drawing on it. So. We did our best based on the drawings they offered us. Um, but, you know, we brought enough spares in some boxes down here um, where, you know, we can kind of adapt to what we need to adapt to, which this is fairly normal for, you know, setting up a bike for rally. You never know what they're gonna kind of throw at you. A lot of hardware you don't get until the day of sort of thing. So, we're just gonna adapt and uh, keep moving forward. Okay, today's uh, day three, uh, uh, being in Mexico, day one of the race. So we're about ready to start in about a half an hour. Uh, Wes is getting ready over there. Um, we're kind of doing some last minute prep on the bike, just making sure everything's nice and tight and ready to go. We're really excited. Um, the uh, rally guys came over, the rally comp guys, and got everything loaded. Um, today is a 140 mile, I'm sorry, 140 kilometer stage with liaisons. Uh, it's a relatively short day. Uh, apparently, uh, Wes is gonna spend a lot of his time in the dunes, so. Uh, he's going to be using some of the uh, navigation off the uh, rally comp here, so um, we're excited. You know, a little bit nervous. It's the first day. We've got a brand new bike, and uh, you know, don't have that much testing time on it. So, um, but we're we're pretty confident that uh, it's going to be a good day. Uh, West Van Nuen House, come from uh, Seattle, Washington area, and uh, race in the Sonora Rally 2021 on a Husqvarna 501, uh, prepared by Rottweiler Performance. Really looking forward to it. This will be my third year. Last year I did it with Chris on his 790 rally bike that he built, and we did really well. I yeah, ended up getting fourth overall, nine seconds off the podium, and uh, came really close. Well, this year we got four factory riders, so we'll be racing against them, and uh, there's a whole string of ex-professional racers as well that have won Baja uh, 1000 multiple times, so it's gonna be a stacked field. Gotta thank uh, my dad at Cyclops Adventure Sports, obviously Chris at Rottweiler for doing all of this. Uh, without him, 
I'd be on my own, kind of. Uh, so just ready for first day of racing. so we can see Wes and um, we just looked on the spot uh, device he's carrying a spot X which we can we can see on the phone and it looks to me like he's already finished and he's headed to he's on a highway so we're gonna head back to the bivouac and, and catch him there I came up across it was probably three quarters of the race I saw happy I saw Billy I saw uh, like 15 other guys all in this big circle and everybody's oh, just no. lost uh, and I'm only like 30k from the or 20k from the finish and I'm like they started following me and I'm like you got a lot more to do than just make a finish it, you know <laughs> well this is part of the rally is navigating right I'm surprised how well I did with the navigation for I haven't done it since last year Right. Well, you're natural. Awesome. This is a good way to start this event. Yeah, hopefully they won't throw it out. I don't think they, they yeah, should. They shouldn't. I, I mean, mean, you did everything right. 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 If I everybody did everything wrong, maybe. Yeah, yeah but, but if you had some people that did and some people that didn't. Yeah, that's that's yeah, how that's, rally works. Yeah, that's well, what it's all about. Only going to be like two guys. So, then three guys proved that they did what they should do. Yeah, I would agree. Just the pro guys have a lot of clout behind them, so, well, let's see. Uh, so, day started off really good. Uh, I haven't ridden this bike at all, or done any nav since this time last year, and uh, so I was kind of hesitant about that, but Picked it right back up where I left off. Uh, didn't really make too many mistakes off the get-go and just got comfortable with the bike. And Chris definitely built an incredible bike. And then Alex with the suspension, it was awesome. Uh, there was a lot of people that had problems with the rally comp. Uh, an arrow usually opens up at, when you get near a waypoint. And so you want to follow the arrow until you get to the waypoint, but it was picking up uh, later waypoints that we haven't even got to. So some guys didn't realize they were doing that and stopped following the road book and would just follow the arrow. And so they skipped like 20, 30 kilometers of the race. So they only did like two thirds of the race maybe. And I just, I realized that was wrong. And so I just kept following the road book and did the entire course. Uh, without any penalties, it hit all the waypoints, so it worked out well for me. But a lot of the other guys are having issues, so they might neutralize the stage, which would put everybody at zero and kind of start fresh tomorrow, which would suck for me, but we'll find out. And there was a lot of riders were following the arrows blindly, which they shouldn't have done, and it caused a safety hazard. We had head-on traffic going at each other, and at that point I had to make a safety decision. And the decision was I'd have to start to cancel that part of the stage. And to not give away everything, we was, took the timing point from the CP1, which is about the time I called it, everybody had cleared that CP. So that was the only fair way to do this and still have a time for you guys to ride on from tomorrow and have a start list. So I do apologize about that. I know some of you rode the whole stage. I've been in the same situation as a driver on Dakar. I know how annoying that is. I've had stages canceled before. So I, I apologize. That's not what our intent was. It was a safety issue and it was, I had no choice. 
Okay, so we just got out of the riders meeting and what they informed us was that there was an issue with a rally comp where it was causing some safety issues and, and riders were coming at each other, which is obviously very dangerous. So uh, the decision they made ultimately uh, cost us a few positions. Um, we actually did really well today. Um, Wes followed all the rules and hit all his waypoints and did really well. But unfortunately, because they tossed out the, uh, the stage, um, it put us um, in from the top five to probably I think we're sitting at eighth overall. So a little disappointing, but we're still within seconds of a lot of the factory teams. It's the first day out of five. So um, it was the right decision to make. We're looking forward to the rest of the week and uh, we're, you know, we're still pretty positive that we're gonna do real well uh, tomorrow. So looking forward to that. a neutral area right here where Wes um, will hopefully be coming through without any issues. Uh, we do have the ability to fix him uh, if he does have any issues, but we'll be on the clock if we do. So we got to hustle uh, in this area. Uh, best case scenario, he comes through, gives us a thumbs up, maybe a wheelie and he's gone and uh, he's doing well. Worst case, you know, we got something to fix. He's got an issue with the bike and, uh, you know, we can fix it here. So uh, we're out here with a, a number of other teams and, you know, it's a waiting game. You kind of hurry up and wait to get out here and and just, uh, you know, wait for the riders to come in and that's all we're doing, so. Okay, today is stage three of the uh, Sonora Rally. Uh, today's the longest stage of the race, which is 415 kilometers. Um, it's in beautiful Puerto Penasco, as you can see. So today is an out and back. We have one chance to gas. We're basically gonna be in the same spot all day. Um, it is on the clock, uh, so we will be timed. So we have a bit of an advantage because we have the quick dump, which not a lot of rally guys have. 
Um, but we were really looking forward to today because the bike is really geared and set up for the terrain that Wes is going to be coming across today, which is like sandy, hard pack, uh, two track, and uh, some peaky dunes here and there. Um, they're a little bit steep, but for the most part, today is more of an off-road race. We've spent much of our time in the dunes so far, which is good, but it makes it tough on the navigation. West really shines in today's type of stages, so we're uh, uh, really hopeful that today's going to be a good one. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. Um, looking forward to it. bib on that wheel for the uh, uh, gas fuel stop because this isn't going to last the whole race. came off the bead uh, and it got caught up in the uh, in the final drive and uh, locked it up right there I feel very fortunate to be right behind him when that happened we got that handled faster than any other team possibly could have um, by the lucky placement of Wes popping out popping out on the highway right when we were passing him so that that put us in a real lucky spot to be right behind him and uh, be able to watch over him just in case something happened. And boy, it did. Oh, that was, you know, disappointing that it takes time. Um, but safety and stuff, I worry mostly about safety, you know, with him out there. Uh, mechanicals and that type of thing. That's just the way it goes. And uh, we, we got fortunate that today we were in the right spot at the right time.
to the north. Covered that the the upper subframe. This is a composite subframe. The upper subframe is uh, broken. So it looks like tonight I noticed that the uh, plastic was was separated right here by a lot. Good news is we have another bike with us. Um, it's a backup, so we're going to be swapping subframes tonight. Okay, on day three of the racing, we had an interesting day. Uh, Wes, as luck would have it, popped out right in front of us. Uh, within about a few miles, he had a tire failure, so luckily we were right behind him. We got that fixed, got him running. He came out on the second stage with another tire, tire failure. We popped a new one on that. We thought we were out of the woods. Um, he had a tough day today. It was hot, really hot, a lot of dust, uh, but he made it through. Um, he got to the finish and then came in. We gave him some water and talking to him a little bit, and then we found that uh, there was, I looked at the bike and there was a bit of a suspicious gap in the plastic. And I started looking further and uh, found this right here. So uh, these Huskies are, uh, you know, uh, they can be problematic with breaking the subframes. So uh, tonight uh, my job is to tear the brand new subframe off of my personal bike in there and get it on this bike. So Wes has a fresh bike tomorrow and has the best chance of uh, a good finish on day four.
This is day four of the Sonora Rally. Um, we got up really early this morning, had, a, had an early start at 6 a.m., about an hour before uh, uh, the, the first three days. Uh, we beat uh, Wes out on the highway. We got out there before him and waited for him on the shoulder, waited until he goes by, or went by, and then we had about a 90-mile uh, uh, liaison, about a 140-kilometer liaison. We followed him in. Uh, got him uh, a fresh tire uh, at the beginning of the stage, got him fueled up and sent him off, and he had a, a, pretty, a pretty uneventful day. Did really well, navigated well, um, got one small penalty for speeding in an area that uh, he was a little bit mixed up in, but outside of that, he had a good day. All we need to do is get the bike cleaned up for day five, and, and we're pretty solid. So uh, hopefully, uh, we don't know our standings yet, but hopefully uh, he, he picked up a, a place or two today. Okay, this is day five of the Sonora Rally. This is the final day. Uh, we sent Wes off this morning with a really good bike. He's a little bit of an island right now, meaning he is an hour behind the guy in front of him and he's an hour in front of the guy behind him. So there's really not much we could do today unless he makes up a really good time. Um, but with a gap like that, he knows not to push it. Um, you know, there, there could be an issue with another team with another bike. That is not something we would ever hope for but it's something that can happen that would bump us up in position. So today, um, you know, it's a little anticlimactic, but uh, you know, you never know how rally's gonna unfold. So he's gonna be coming across the road here. We're gonna give him a splash of fuel, check the bike out, give him a tire if he needs it, if he's got any issues. But outside of that, we're just gonna take care of him. He's gonna take care of the bike and get it to the finish, and, uh, and then we'll see where we stand. Yeah, it was, it was a blast out there today. The dunes were fun, the roads were fast. Uh, yeah, had a really good time today. Uh, definitely keep coming back. Uh, yeah, it's, it's always a good time. Yesterday was challenging, but glad we made it through the week. Uh, so, ready for a couple of beers. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, we're here at the finish line on day five, and the race is over. We've had a fantastic week so far. Uh, the bike performed flawlessly. Um, Wes did really, really well. Um, we had some stiff competition this year, and Wes, um, you know, he tried his hardest and, and really, really impressed us on the bike. Um, you know, we had a, a few issues during the week, you know, leading up to this that we remedied really quickly, and we were in, you know, a great place at a great time. And big thanks to the promoters, um, Darren Skilton and, and the Sonora Rally for putting this on, keeping everybody safe, and uh, we're just grateful that we came out um, to the final day safe with a good bike, good rider, and uh, we certainly learned a lot. So we're looking forward to see how we did tonight and, uh, and having some fun finally. This is the first night we get a chance to really relax, so looking forward to that very much. We'll start off with the sixth place in the overall standings because there was a lot of you racing this year, so we're going to give an extra trophy. But to bring up Justin Morgan. Justin, you here? Okay, so fifth place overall, Mason Klein. Uh, fourth place overall, um, we know he's not here, but he's, uh, Kendall Norman was fourth in a row. Congratulations to Kendall. Third place at the uh, Yokohama Snow Rally overall is uh, Ignacio Conejo. Uh, second place overall, and my friend uh, Skyler House. First place overall this year, Yokohama Sonora Rally. You know, it's uh, I think fourth time, third in a row, and someone that was running a monstrous pace out there every day. And the guys were all coming in and saying that, you know, and uh, drive riding like like an animal out there. And it was really impressive to watch. And you're always there fighting at the front, so it's no surprise to see you up here. So Ricky Brabeck. <laughs> 